Hello and welcome to the Design Based Short Circuit Program Tutorial. In this lesson, we will learn how to run a basic short circuit analysis on a network of your choice. Let's begin by opening the file of interest. While doing this, make sure that the file contains a viable network free of modeling errors. Next, invoke the short circuit program by selecting the AC short circuit option from the analysis menu. Alternatively, you may also select the AC short circuit icon from the Tools icon palette. Now let's take a minute to familiarize ourselves with the different tools available in the interface. The first setting is the analysis pick list. Here's where you can choose the methodology that will be used in your study. For our example, we will select the AC NCI IEEE method. The first icon in the series invokes the Options menu. Here you can select different guidelines and preferences for your analysis. Notice that it contains three tabs. The Calculation tab, the Control for ANSI IEEE tab, and the Control for Tolerance tab. We'll discuss these tabs and their contents in more detail in future tutorials. Let's go to the Calculation tab and select the System Voltage as our base and pre-fault voltage for the analysis. Annotation will be our default results output. This basically means that we will display the results of the analysis on the single line diagram instead of using a written report. Lastly for this section, we'll choose All Buses as our fault location. Now let's move to the Control for ANSI IEEE tab. Take a minute to examine the screen and leave the defaults as they are for now. Finally, let's go to the Control for Tolerance tab. In our example, we will ignore impedance variations by deselecting all the items. Once we have completed our selections, press OK to return to the main screen. The next icon in the toolbar invokes the Report Manager. Here you can select among various types of reports, customize their contents and export them to other applications. This section will be revisited in other tutorials. For now we'll skip it since we have chosen to display our results directly under the single line diagram. Let's return to the main menu by selecting OK. The next icon in the toolbar is the short circuit back annotation control. Here we decide what and how it gets displayed under the single line diagram. Let's turn on the annotation by toggling this button to the on position. Next. Select the Auto Refresh option to automatically update back annotated results. In the Color and Font section we can select the type of font we wish to use. The decimal precision with which to annotate the results can be defined by moving the slider to the desired value. In the Display Fault Results selection we can choose which results and parameters will be displayed on the single line diagram. Let's select the button that enables bus current, X over R ratio and impedance. We will not include the bus prefault voltage since we already know that this was preset to nominal in previous screens. In the options for fault at a single bus, select all available settings for now. Please note that this section applies only in cases where a single bus is selected from the network. The significance of this section will be illustrated later on during this video. From the fault time pick list, select the half cycle fault current. For fault type, let's select the three phase fault. From the phase or sequence field, let's select maximum phase. And for the specific fault current components, let's choose both the symmetrical and asymmetrical fault currents. So, to summarize, we will be conducting a three phase short circuit analysis after which we will back annotate onto our single line diagram the maximum symmetrical and asymmetrical fault current values for the half cycle three phase fault current. Next we have to decide how to display the results. In the displaying form section, let's pick actual value instead of per unit and choose to display it in units of current instead of capacity. For the case of faults at a single bus, we can also control the use and graphical appearance of current flow arrows as shown here. Finally, let's pick the units for voltage, current and capacity. 
In our example, we'll select volts, kiloamps, and megavolt amperes. Let's once again select OK to return to the main menu. The next icon is the Analyze command. Pressing this button will execute the short circuit analysis. So let's go ahead and proceed. Once the analysis is completed, the results are displayed next to each bus of the network under study. Let's zoom into bus 2A and get a better view. As per our selections, the results show the half cycle symmetrical and asymmetrical three phase fault currents in kiloamps. Now let's try conducting a short circuit analysis at a single bus as I alluded to earlier. This is very simple to do. Just select the bus of interest by clicking on it once with your mouse. In this case, we'll stick with bus 2A. Now that the bus has been selected, Press the Analyze button and rerun the analysis. Notice that when selecting a single bus, we can display a lot more information about the fault. In this case, we can see not only the bus fault current at bus 2A as indicated here, but also the upstream and downstream branch contributions for the half cycle time band along with flow arrows and the electrical phase angles. The level of detail for faults of a single bus is defined in the back annotation interface under the options for fault of a single bus and display flow arrow sections. Let's now return to the main screen by pressing OK. The final icon invokes the reactor sizing program. This application allows you to size a line reactor for the purposes of reducing the available fault level at a bus of your choice. For example, let's say that we wish to limit the fault current at bus 1A to 15,000 amps. First, let's select bus 1A from the single line diagram and then select the reactor sizing icon. Notice that the calculated fault level at this bus is in excess of 16,000 amps. In order to reduce this current to 15,000 amps, place your cursor in the desired fault current field and type 15,000. Then, just press the Tab button on your keyboard and the reactor impedance in ohms is displayed in the reactor size field. That's all there is to it. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for more video tutorials in this series.